Welcome to Beyond the Beacon with Bishop Kevin Sweeney, a podcast of the Diocese of Patterson. I'm Jay Agnish, Communications Director for the Diocese and Editor of the Beacon Newspaper. With me is Bishop Kevin Sweeney. Bishop, good morning. How are you? I'm good, Jay. How are you doing? I'm doing good, thanks. What, what's new? What's happening? Uh, things are good. Uh, busy time of year, uh-huh. uh, but nice uh, visiting schools and uh, getting back into the swing. And confirmation season is oh, yeah. back again. Uh, the at confirmations this fall, I've been mentioning this book I read on uh, Fatima, Fatima for Today. And also, as I've shared, uh, Bishop Robert Barron gave this great talk on prayer at, at World Youth Day. So um, I'm trying something a little different, uh, uh, sending a follow-up email after confirmation to the parents and sponsors to let them know about this book. And also because in the going to Fatima and reading this book and getting to know more about the messages, uh, yeah. the Blessed Mother asked the children and asked us to pray the rosary every day. And uh, at one point, I think with the group, um, I said, you know, you may not have time to pray the whole rosary every day, but then again, you might. Uh, it's <laughs> <laughs> so uh, so I've been trying to pray it every day. I, I, my mother tried to get us to pray it every day, and I prayed it, you know, many times over the years. Uh, yeah. Uh, but um, not necessarily every day. Uh, so I've been trying to do that since um, coming back from Fatima and... Uh, uh, you know, um, wonderful about celebrating confirmation to thank the parents, the first catechists and the sponsors, you know, and, um, but I've, you know, the, whether they're eighth grade, ninth, 10th, 11th, the, the young people still need their parents and godparents to be that mm-hmm. good example. So, uh, trying to encourage them. And, and in these days we need to be spiritually nourished. Um, yeah. uh, are and, you, are um, you seeing fruits from praying the rosary yourself? Or? Yeah. Oh yeah. Um, yes. Yeah. Uh, it's, uh, it's a it's a it's a discipline sometimes, but uh, uh-huh. it brings us closer to Our Lady. And uh, I think I remember you uh, speaking uh, about the Rosary, right? Absolutely, yes, yes, that's, yes. So uh, that's we can I need speak a little bit more day. about that. I yes, that. Yeah. Yes, yes. So, so with us is, is Keaton Douglas, the executive director of the I Thirst Initiative, and we're going to talk about how the church and all of us can play a role in recovery from addiction. Hello, Keaton. Thanks Hello. for joining us. I'm so excited to be with both of you this thanks, morning. Thanks, thanks for, for having here. me. Yes, really yes, appreciate it. Yeah, so I'm going to ask the bishop to, to open us up in prayer, and then, yes. we'll, and then sure. we'll get to our conversation. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. We remember that Jesus has told us wherever two or three are gathered together in his name, he's there in the midst of them. Today, uh, September 21st, is the Feast of St. Matthew, the Apostle and Evangelist. We remember that Jesus looked at Matthew with love as he called him from by name from behind the tax collector's bench and mm-hmm. Matthew's response. And we give thanks especially for the word of God, especially the word of God in the Gospels, um, the good news of our salvation. And as we pray through the intercession of St. Matthew, we pray together in the words that Jesus himself has taught us. Our Our Father, Father, who art in heaven, heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy thy kingdom kingdom come, come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and and forgive us our trespasses, as as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Amen. Amen. Our Lady, Seat of Wisdom, pray for us. Our Lady of Fatima, Our Lady of Sorrows, pray for us. St. Joseph and St. John the Baptist, pray for us. St. Matthew. Pray, pray for us. us. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. 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 So um, just a little more about Keaton. Um, so the uh, the I Thirst initiative that I, that I mentioned, it empowers dioceses, parishes, and communities to become a resource for those suffering from addictions and their families. At the heart of I Thirst is an understanding that there is a spiritual dimension to the disease of addiction that cannot be met by clinical professionals but only by the spiritual consolation and guidance that the church can provide. So we're going to learn more about I Thirst and more about Keaton. And Bishop, what, uh, how did you first come to get to know <laughs> Keaton? Uh, probably a, a mutual friend, uh, Father Dennis Berry, right? right? Uh, That's yes, right. when I arrived in the diocese, uh, Father Dennis was at um, the Shrine of St. Joseph in Sterling with the... Um, the missionaries, the missionaries of the of the of the Most, Most Holy, Holy Trinity, Trinity right? right? Yes, right. yes. Uh, sometimes known as the Trinitarians, That's right? right? And right. Uh, so they're a great blessing um, in the diocese. And maybe Keaton can share a little bit of that history. Um, and we, I think, can see the way that the Holy Spirit works yeah. sometimes. And um, and so uh, Father Dennis Berry had also been uh, um, 
in, in charge of migrant ministry in the mm-hmm. diocese for a time. He's uh, very close to the Spanish-speaking community, and uh, uh, he's I think he's on sabbatical at yeah, the moment. Sure and uh, um, so um, uh, Father Dennis had told me about Keaton and I thirst and encouraged us to connect. Um, we didn't have much connection right at the beginning, right, and then sure. more recently we were in contact. Last time, and uh, right, <laughs> right, 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 and. Uh, now that um, you, Father Ed Redding was with us a couple of weeks ago, he's a priest of our diocese yes. who had been in um, ministry and uh, addiction and recovery um, for his whole priesthood, really. And September being uh, National Recovery Month, yes. uh, we thought it would be a, a good timing to, and we're very grateful that Thank you. you're available Thank to you, be Bishop. with us. Yeah, thanks very much. Um, maybe you could just uh, give us a little background as to. Uh, so you are, are the uh, founder of I Thirst right. Ministry, is that right? right. And, and, mm-hmm. and maybe what led you to uh, uh, be with those, walk the journey with those sure. who are in recovery um, and healing, that healing process? You know, my journey to I Thirst has been kind of crazy, kind of circuitous. Um, I, praise God, ad- ad- chemical addictions were not an issue for me personally, but I am, by profession, an entertainer. I was a singer, and I had an opportunity to sing all over the world for many, many years and really had some wonderful venues and gigs and performances. Um, But somewhere along that line, I had something happen to me, which was the unexpected demise of my first marriage. And I was angry. I was angry. And and to be honest with you, I left the church for a while. My Mm. heart was broken. I was angry. Um... But God had other plans for me. And in a moment that really was a moment of divine intervention, which is a whole other story unto itself, Mm -hmm. I had this moment of forgiveness and my heart was open. I was brought back to prayer. And I started talking about this spiritual healing that I had encountered in a very real way. And people were saying, "Mm, you know, you're different. What's going on with you? And I said, wow, you know, I've come back to the church of my origin, my Catholic faith, but now I come back to it with joy. I'm excited about it. I love it. And I, I found it in a way I never found it before. Mm. So I started telling my story. I was the host of, uh, or the toast, I should say, of every rosary, communion breakfast. Rosie Alter Society. Oh, yeah, yeah right, Alter right, Society, right. you name it. I was, I was speaking and, and talking about this joy, you know, that I had found. And um, I was asked, uh, by this time I went back to school. I went back to Seton Hall University right. to get my master's in theology there. And I met... On my second day of class, I was a little unnerved, feeling like a fish out of water. And a, a young fellow came up to me and he said, you look like you could use a friend. <laughs> I was like, is, oh. it, is it that obvious? <laughs> <laughs> and he, he said, and he introduced himself. He was then a brother, Aro. He was a member of the missionary servants of the Most Holy Trinity, now Father Aro. And he shepherded me through the the whole education process and invited me to come talk at his community. And when they invited me to talk, they invited me to speak in front of 25 women who were from Straight and Narrow here in the diocese who were on um, a spirituality retreat that the missionary servants of the Most Holy Trinity had on a regular basis. This was an ongoing... At the shrine in Sterling? Yes, at the shrine. Mm -hmm. And the reason why they had that was because for 101 years since their founding by Father Thomas Augustine Judge who was a Vincentian priest, Um, he had a charism to serve the poor and the abandoned. But he understood prophetically that amongst the poor and the abandoned were those suffering from addiction. So this community, the missionary servants of the Most Holy Trinity, Mm. have been involved in addiction and recovery for 101 years, really on the cutting edge. Yeah. Yeah. So they were having these retreats, so I went and I spoke. But I have to tell you, I was nervous because... To be honest, I've never smoked marijuana once in my life. So I thought, what are these women, how are they going to relate to me? Mm. Are they going to relate to me? And the gentleman that became my mentor, God rest his soul, said to me, do you think that there's nothing they can learn from you? And I was like, well, I guess there's something they can learn from me. But then he said, do you think there's nothing that you can learn from them? And I hadn't thought about that. Hmm. So I went and I told my story about my healing, my sadness, my feelings of isolation, despair that I went in that terrible eight-year period in my uh, post-marriage years. And um, when I told my story and I I got emotive and I cried, they cried. And when I laughed, they laughed. And they taught me something that day that was really incredibly important to this (laughs) ministry. It was that 
it doesn't matter what breaks us. There is a commonality of brokenness. Mm. And it is in that brokenness that we can walk, really walk with each other, really see each other. That day, they didn't see me as somebody different. I didn't see them as having a problem that I didn't have. I saw all of us as women who were searching for a spiritual healing. I had found it. I was sharing it. They wanted it. It changed my life that one single day. And it really did. From there to I Thirst. Yeah. Uh, w- um, I, I, I know that you've shared the curriculum, right? Right, uh, right. And I've uh, heard, I know that uh, I Thirst uh, yourself and the ministry um, has partnered with dioceses uh, yes. to do training in parishes. Uh, 100%. But, um, but uh, how did you get to I Thirst? So what had happened was after that, really life-changing retreat that I went on. Um, I remember driving home, and I felt a euphoria. I felt a, I, I've never felt it before. I've never felt it since. And I remember the next day was a, a Monday morning. I went to uh, daily mass up at my parish, St. Thomas the Apostle, up in Sandyston, part of our diocese. And I spoke to my wonderful priest, Father Wayne Marka. Oh, yeah. And oh, I Wayne. said to him, um, I explained what had transpired with me, this feeling. And, and he said to me, Keaton, I... I think you've been called. And I said, now, Father, I said, I'm in theology school. I study the call Mm -hmm. narratives. That's like Isaiah and people like that. It's not me. And he goes, no. Everybody gets called, but not everybody listens. So they invited me back to be a part of that uh, ministry, and I became a regular contributor for a number of years. And then when uh, those gentlemen that were running it retired, went on sabbatical, um, I took it over. And I I remember going to the leadership of the missionary servants, and I said to them, what I have learned from this experience is that addiction is a spiritual disease with devastating psychological and physiological ramifications. Do I remember correctly that somewhere along the line, did you you begin studying um, addiction uh, and recovery? No, I, I wound up learning addiction and recovery because I was invited to start speaking at Straight and Narrow, and I started immersing myself and, and becoming a, a part of the, the community there, and then at other treatment facilities. Right. And then I studied to be a recovery coach. Okay, that's, that's what right, that's right, yeah, yes, 100% right, right. In, the, and, in, the, and, in the secular and, world. And you found a lot of valuable information, yeah. but missing a, 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 a piece, the spiritual, a huge, right? A yeah, huge right, piece. right. Everybody would talk about all the clinical things like that, and all the people taking the class with me were there in long-term recovery, Uh, many of them, I should say, and they attributed their long-term sustained sobriety to a spiritual awakening, all different kinds. Mm. So there's a field of study uh, to be a recovery coach, is that right? Yes, absolutely, Mm. absolutely, Mm. and and recovery peer specialists. They do marvelous work, but the element of spirituality, which is a necessary dimension Mm. of wellness was not covered but for two or three pages. So as I took over the uh, the role there, I went to the leadership of the missionary servants and I said, we believe this is a spiritual disease. What are we as church doing systemically? And the and answer. Right. We need to we need to offer something. 100%. And um, I thirst uh, the those words that Jesus spoke from the cross, but also um, uh, Mother Teresa um, yes. f- centered so much of her ministry on Absolutely. trying to satiate that ter- thirst of Jesus, and um, the and you know she would talk about the physical hunger um, yes. and and needs of those that she served, but um, but meeting their thirst for uh, for love, uh, for knowing that they're not alone. Right. Um, so, uh, uh, how did you? come to the uh, name of I thirst well you know I was uh, I was praying and um, I I believe that um, I'm very close to our Blessed Mother she's the one that brought me to the foot of the cross with her son she brought me home to the church everything that we do everything is guided by her presence everything and so uh, I was really in conversation with Our Lady and she uh, I felt put on my heart that this ministry that was now going to hopefully be an answer to empower our church, capital C, to be a resource, should be called I Thirst. But the word thirst is an acronym also for the Healing Initiative Recovery Spirituality 12-step. So it is, it is, it acknowledges our thirst for him. It acknowledges his thirst for us and the thirst that we all 
need, you know, that, that quenching that, that we all need to be, to be quenched, to be healed. I was listening to another interview you had given, and you talked about uh, that uh, group in Akron that uh, the, um, uh, um, what was the, the Protestant group? Uh, the Oxford right, group. Right, right. And uh, the concern about the Catholic Church yeah. at that time in the 30s, right? And, yeah. And, and then this group of Catholics came together and took the name Alcoholics Anonymous, but right. uh, Bill W., uh, did he write the book with yes, help? Right. right. Bill W. and Dr. Bob Smith wrote right. the book, right. the big book right. about, we right. call it the big book, right. but it's right. Alcoholics right. Anonymous. Yeah. It, and um, you're mentioning that just two weeks ago, Father Ed Redding was yeah. uh, sitting in your chair and uh, talked about uh, Bill W.'s connections to um, the Diocese of Patterson. I believe he lived in Morristown for a time yeah. or, and was connected yeah. to... Um, or the Rockaway. Jesuit, Rockaway. oh Rockaway, right? Yeah, yeah. But I think he had but a connection think he with the Jesuit, the yeah. Jesuit retreat house yes, in Morristown, yes, yes. yep. yes. and uh, the connection of the twelve steps to right. Ignatian spirituality. And as 100%. you had said, um, at today's Matthew's Gospel yes. and to the feast of Saint Matthew, the the Beatitudes, and Absolutely. so um, again, seeing how the Spirit works. Um, but I know Jay had some questions as well. Yeah. Um, so I guess, I guess um, in all in all your uh, your teaching and your exploring uh, um what what are you uh wh- what are the takeaways like um from a practical uh perspective sure. like what, what what can i do as a, as a you know as a member of the catholic church yeah, in my absolutely. community what can our parish you know, do to, to support recovery absolutely thank you for asking that jay it's a really important question um i'll give you a, just a, a, a to go back just a tad it was after we realized that we needed some systemic something to empower the church that I wrote a a 218 page curriculum which was academically certified through Seton Hall University and is taught continually and we have relationships with various dioceses we're also in collaboration with Catholic Extension which provides subsidies for mission dioceses or the poorer dioceses throughout our nation and on our territories Mm. so to date, you know, uh, we have we have trained people that are now working in treatment facilities, correctional faci- facilities, reentry programs, hospital chaplaincies, um, Catholic schools, etc., all throughout the nation and beyond. In Ireland, we're in, in Dublin, Ireland, and we're in Pago Pago in American wow. Samoa. So, and yeah. in thirty-two different states, we're we're working with six different Native American populations who are mm. traditionally underserved, mm. underheard, mm-hmm. and we are just beginning our first Spanish language version. Which everything that we do is is always bilingual. I work with Father Luis de la Cuadra, the missionary. Oh, servants. he's doing great work. He's yes, doing right, great right, work. Right, right. So, um, I'm very very proud and honored to be working with him. Um, and out of all of this teaching came the idea. For for the book, The Road to Hope. And in the book, we talk about what are the practical things that we can do on a day-to-day basis. What can we go back and do today? What can we do next week? And certain things are very important. The the reason we're really hopeful for that is that we're going to change hearts. Because instead of seeing the other, I want people to Mm. start seeing their own suffering, as I saw my suffering in those women that I spoke mm-hmm. to. And uh, you begin each chapter, right, with a personal story, yes, a family, uh, right. uh, individuals who are, right, uh, a real life story. Absolutely. And I think, as you say, you know, if um, if we haven't had uh, substance issues in our own lives or maybe even in our own immediate family, we know those who have been That's through right. it. And, and hearing those stories as the beginning of each chapter, I think, is a, as to Jay's question about, um, you know, what any of us can do, I think becoming informed, realizing that so many 100%. go through this uh, and, and mm-hmm. gaining then from the personal story comes uh, how we can walk the journey, right? So much of your um, uh, experience, I think, in the beginning or what you share in the book is how you were with families, right, who had a, right. A, a child who was dealing with substance right. abuse and, uh, and how to walk that painful right. journey, that journey to the cross, you say, yeah, with our blessed amen. mother so often. Um, but that um, the more aware we are, the more we might be ready when the moment comes to for That's a neighbor, right. so s- someone in our family, uh, right. uh, a, a fam- another family dealing with uh, the, the, the terrible pain of the um, uh, experience of addiction. Uh, um, so I, I highly recommend uh, <laughs> The Road to Hope. Yes, it's Thank really, really real well done. And, you know, it, it, it's true because we're really hopeful that we see ourselves in people that are suffering, despite whatever the suffering is. Mm-hmm. And we see the face of Christ in these people. You know, I, I, I always think about the parable of the Good Samaritan, right? 
And the, the priest and the Levite passed by the bloodied person left there. It was unholy. To t- and, and, and Jesus tells us, you know, who, who, is, who, is this, who, shows, who is this man's neighbor? The one who shows him mercy. And he tells us, go do likewise. Go, go out, go out and be with those people. Lift them up, even though they are bloody, even though others will pass them by. We must go lift them. And we haven't really lifted them for so long. Right. But it's because right. we haven't really understood. And I think that if we can see it through the prism of our own suffering, if we can understand it through the, 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 the lens of attachment, that we all get attached to things you know, that preclude us from developing our relationship with God and mm. our fellows. You know those two great commandments, to love our God, right. to love right. our right. fellows? Right. Right. That's the cross itself, right? right? right. The right. very That's cross right. itself. Yes. But addictions become an unnatural attachment. Mm. We only see ourselves in it, the object. And then we are precluded from looking up, from looking right, around. Right. So if we understand that, you know, even St. Paul, right? Why Romans 7, right. I'm going to paraphrase, right. why do I do what I don't want to do? Right, he right, understood right, what it was like to have And even the thorn in the flesh that he talks yes, about, we don't know exactly what, what it was, but was. it was something certainly that he Absolutely. was dealing with uh, in terms of his own physical, um, right. whether it be addictions, right. desires, um, but but something in his body that he was really struggling exactly. with. Exactly. You've given me a thorn in the That's flesh. Right. To keep me humble. We That's all uh, right. right, 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 right. Absolutely. Uh, but but um, but uh, but then I realized that Saint Paul said, um, "Your grace is enough for me, and That's when right. I'm weak, you're strong." That's and right. Okay, Lord, if you're not going to, I asked you to take it away all these right. times, right. and if not, then okay, show me how to. Go oh, forward and and, and no healing That's even right. with the the wounds that that That's are right. that are still there. But 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 he can he can give us that healing. That's absolutely true. And I think that you know we talk about you know in the program of Alcoholics Anonymous, there's they have some really wonderful mantras, and one of them is that hurt people hurt people. Right, when we're right, like right, this, huh, we right, have a tendency right, to be like that. Right. But we believe also because that's very true. We believe that healed people heal people. Oh, wow. You know, and those of us that have suffered from whatever it was, those women were addiction. Mine was adultery, right, uh, mm. on my end. But, but it was through that suffering that I was able to develop compassion and love that God gave me. I didn't mm-hmm. develop it by mm-hmm. myself. Right. And I think when we see that, we, we have an opportunity to walk with each other. Even if it has never affected us, I believe strongly that each one of us has a role to play. Even in, in things that are simple, like including addiction when we say the prayers of the faithful, for those suffering from the disease of addiction and right, their families, right. that we may feel the tender mercies of and, and healing mm-hmm. of our Lord Jesus Christ, we pray to the Lord, Lord, hear our prayer. Because there are people in the pews who are keeping their affliction or their family mm-hmm. members' affliction under wraps. Yeah, and you're, you're getting into like the stigma, yeah. you know, is that yeah. still exists. Sure does. I guess, even though sure does. there's so much good sure work being does. done. Yeah. What can we do to combat stigma? Exactly. And then to work ecumenically. And, um, yeah. you know, in our diocese in October, uh, up at Our Lady Queen of Peace up in Branchville with Father Phil uh, Tangora up there, we will be doing the first recovery and worship session. I believe it's October 22nd, mm. where we're inviting all people. It's, it's an ecumenical mm. event. The Feast of St. Pope John Amen. Paul II. Amen. <laughs> October to 22nd. have people to come in to be able to, to come out of the shadows, to, to, to pray for their or their loved one's recovery, to celebrate and be thankful for their own, uh, et cetera. And we're going to try to do this all throughout. You know, it's going to be up in Sussex County, but the first one is in our own, in our own uh, diocese with, with Father Phil leading the way. So we're really proud of the work that the Diocese of Patterson has been doing. If, if not for the Diocese of Patterson, I thirst wouldn't exist. Right, and uh, you mentioned Straight and Narrow. Yeah. Uh, Father Ed shared with us that great history here in our diocese yes. that um, Straight and Narrow exists, and it's growing and thriving and right. serving so many and bringing about healing. And yes. to hear that you, uh, uh, through Straight and Narrow, really uh, oh, yeah. had some of your oh, introduction really. into it, this It really work. was. Yeah. I w- used to go to uh, all of the campuses and give spirituality sessions you know, trying to get people to understand that they need to develop an intimacy with the God of their understanding, because we didn't necessarily have a Catholic audience, right? So just to try to open them up to that dimension. I know that I could, if I could open the door, the Lord would do the rest, right? Absolutely. So, so Absolutely. that's, uh, that was a big deal. But so yeah. are you, are you seeing progress? I am. I, I, I do see progress. I see progress in, um, in the way our faith leaders, yourselves, 
um, I just got back from speaking at a bishop's conference for Catholic Extension for Mission Dioceses, where I was asked to present in front of uh, 70 bishops that were there, and um, they too were attentive. They were understanding that this is a plague. This is, um, you know, the numbers are staggering. There are 40 million people today that in America only that are um, actively addicted to chemicals. You hear the sad, terribly sad story in New York City about a child oh, dying in it uh, um, uh, because of fentanyl. fentanyl. Yeah, mm. right, yeah. Right, right. I mean, it's just a heartbreak. Right, right, right. But it's so pervasive. Right, right. And then if you think um, that there are... But there's hope. <laughs> there's there is hope, right? There's definitely <laughs> hope. Right, there's right, definitely right, hope. And right. that's what we are right, hoping to bring and an right. awareness. You know, So mm-hmm. I'm very thankful for this chance to share. Yeah, I think raising awareness is, is a so first step. Right? 100%. Right, right, right. And uh, if there's somebody listening who's um, struggling with an addiction themselves, mm-hmm. um, any words that you would um, offer or, or share? that? Um, Certainly. You know, we have people who are trained. That's what our training does. Spiritual companions all throughout New Jersey who will walk with you in your affliction or your family member providing spiritual consolation and recovery resource information. We can help you find treatment. And they can reach us uh, by going to our website and contacting us through our website, which is www.ithirstinitiative.org. Ithirstinitiative.org. They can reach us there. Uh, If they're interested in the training, which I hope they are, they can reach us. They can contact us there. Uh, Seton Hall will be giving us their next. We're we're in the middle of a class right now. Uh, They'll be giving us the next uh, dates for the next calendar, you know. And uh, we'd love to get more and more people from the diocese involved in their parishes. We have quite a few, but we'd like even more. And um, to be able to serve those uh, in our own backyard. That would be a, a great blessing. Uh, uh, changing the topic just a little bit, but yeah. something struck me when uh, um, uh, some of what you shared in the other place. Uh, the um, uh, um, I wasn't crazy about going to church as a kid, but we had to be there. And one thing that always struck me was um, the music. And uh, you shared a story about um, your mom singing at church, right? Yeah, and yeah. Uh, you're having an introduction to music in Absolutely. your own life through that experience? Yeah, my mom, God rest her soul, she passed uh, at 91 a couple of years ago. Um, my mother was a choir director and a beautiful singer my entire life. And, you know, that was back before anybody had child care or babysitting. So uh, my mother would go to sing a funeral or whatnot. And from my earliest days, mm. I would have a little prayer book, probably before even I could read, and she would prop me there. And she would sing, and Mrs. Jar Staffer, I'll never forget <laughs> that name, was to play the organ. She later became my piano teacher in Massapequa, Long Island. Oh, is that right? Yeah, wow. yeah, yeah. And, um, you know, they would play and sing, and I just grew up listening to, to music, and I, you know, eventually became a professional musician. And yeah, we can take myself. it for granted what a, yeah. a gift music can be, how it lifts the soul, and uh, especially music that's a prayer that... Um, uh, uh, as the saints tell us, they those who sing pray twice, and mm-hmm. uh, so it struck me to um, hear how that um, impacted your own life, and it led to uh, uh, a secular career in some sense, yes. right? Uh, but um, but also was part of a spiritual journey. It was, it was. Jay asked me, "Do you still perform?" And I said, "You know, I I sing every day. If somebody stops me, if I'm if I'm giving a talk somewhere, I always incorporate music into it because it's part of who I am. I said I just nobody writes me a check anymore, <laughs> and I don't wear sequins, but other than that, I'm still singing <laughs> all the time. It's, it's great. <laughs> so it's well, good. Yeah. Wow. What a wonderful conversation. Um, you're doing such inspired work, Thank and so so glad to have you here to talk about it. Um, yeah. Thanks. Mentioning Any, the uh, shrine. Uh, um, I hope people in our diocese know about it, right? It's oh. such a, a wonderful place for even just to make a trip yourself just for a day, uh, for an afternoon. And uh, the um, uh, f- uh, priests and brothers of the missionary servants uh, 
And do you know the Polish sisters? Oh, I can't <laughs> live a without my group Polish of sisters. sisters. Yes, yes, <laughs> they yes. are. They are everything. When they are just, they are the most. What a gift they beautiful. are to that place and uh, to the diocese. Yes, uh, I can't even tell you. They, right. It brings tears to me to think of how they have supported our work. Uh, when we were doing the retreats there pre-pandemic on a regular basis, how they would contribute their joy uh, in service is... Uh, a great non- gift shop. Oh, and a great <laughs> gift shop. Don't forget the gift shop. And the Mosaic Chapel there we oh, have Oh, yes, now, beautiful, right. Which uh, right, you were there right, yes. when you first started. Yes, that's you know, right. I yes, think that's yes, another time when yes. I met you. And it's, uh, right. it's really a beautiful destination bucolic land the 9-11 memorial there but i can't say enough about the shine of saint joseph it's a gem and a treasure within our our beautiful diocese yeah Yeah, and we'll have links to to how you can visit the shrine and also the i thirst initiative check out more about that um and as we near the end of this episode bishop any anything else for for keaton or anything else on addiction that that's well kind of come to mind for uh, you? you know as we uh Providentially, maybe, or uh, having this conversation on the Feast of St. Uh, Matthew, uh, uh, the call to conversion through the experience of God's mercy. You know, and I think um, uh, so many know that hope is more than just a word. Those who were literally at, at, at the bottom, right, at, at, um, that uh, struggled with addiction and, um, and, 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 and all that comes with it That's and right. all the loss. And, yeah. um, right. But hope and healing uh, are possible, but they're possible because um, people share the gifts that they've received and, and witness to, the, um, to their own journey so that they're willing to walk the journey with others. And so just to thank you and all those at iThirst and all those who um, in uh, the recovery um, community and, and, and the 12-step community, uh, just to uh, encourage them and um, uh, ask the Lord to continue to bless the work and and um and the accompaniment and 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 that offer of of hope and and healing that that that's so needed thank you thank you for your work and uh bishop what are you looking forward to in the next few days or or weeks i know you're going down to dc for the pilgrimage pilgrimage in a couple of weeks if you actually next week uh i'm going to be at a uh evangelization conference in portland oregon uh yes at uh I think it's Mount Angel, beautiful um, uh, abbey um, monastery out there mm-hmm. where there's also a seminary. Archbishop Alexander Sample is the archbishop, and this is actually part two of a conference that I attended two years ago. It's hard, time flies, and uh, wow. I was out there for an evangelization conference in uh, the St. Paul's Evangelization Society. sponsors these um, conferences and workshops with bishops in particular, um, so that their diocese would become an evangelizing diocese. Wow. And uh, it was such a good experience two years ago when the opportunity came up to, uh, to return, uh, uh, leaving on Tuesday and coming back on Thursday uh, for, <laughs> for the West Coast. My <laughs> but uh, mm. actually, um, the day I return is um, September 29th, the Feast of the Archangels. I have a particular affinity for St. Michael the Archangel as I had pastor of St. Michael's Parish in Brooklyn. But we're having our first Project Andrew that night, and we'll be sharing some more information about Project Andrew. But uh, hopefully uh, in parishes, uh, certainly our priests have heard that uh, uh, briefly. Andrew was one of the disciples of John the Baptist when John said, Behold the Lamb of God and Jesus. And John and the other went to follow Jesus, and they said, Where are you staying? He said, Come and see. And before following G- Andrew went and got his brother Peter and said, "We found the Lord and brought Peter to Jesus." And Jesus said, "You are Peter," and on this, um, and and invited called Peter as well. And so um, Project Andrew looks for uh, those who would be Andrew for someone else, a young man considering priesthood that could use an invitation or um, to a very informal evening. Uh, so we'll share more information about that. But keeping your prayers uh, on the feast of the Archangel, September 29th, the um, the um, uh, pro- first project, Andrew, that we'll be having in, in this fall. We'll have others to come. Uh, uh, September 30th is um, the Feast of St. Jerome. October 1st is Sunday this year, but the Feast of St. Therese of Lisieux, the mm-hmm. little flower, do little things with great love. And then three days after that, uh, St. Francis, Francis. Uh, will be blessing animals and uh, and uh, remembering the great um, uh, uh Great St. Francis of Assisi. So we get a chance to bless some animals. Uh, we'll see. I have to check on that. Yeah, uh, look, I hope I, hope I, I will. Yeah, so <laughs> my, yeah, my friend <laughs> wants to get his dog blessed. <laughs> I can so write him down. so good things to come. Good things to come. And this coming Saturday, um, we have a healing uh, workshop uh, in the morning. But uh, 
um, 10 or 11 at the cathedral, the Filipino martyrs, um, uh, our diocesan Filipino ministry will be hosting a, a mass, an annual mass that they have, and I'll be happy to be with them for that mass at the cathedral. Okay, awesome, a lot going on. Mm -hmm. And I also want to tell everyone, here in the Diocese of Patterson, we are conducting our Diocesan Ministries Appeal, which supports Catholic charities, seminary and formation, Catholic urban education, the health care of our senior priests, and more. Please consider helping your brothers and sisters in need by making a gift. Visit 2023appeal.org today, and thank you. Thank you for spending time with us. Join us again for the next episode of Beyond the Beacon. Please subscribe to this podcast wherever you're listening. Give us a positive rating, write a review, and if you're watching this episode on Bishop Kevin Sweeney's YouTube channel, be sure to like the episode, follow the channel, and ring the bell for notifications. Email questions and podcast topic ideas for the bishop to beyond at pattersondiocese.org. Thank you for listening to Beyond the Beacon. Thank you. God bless you. Thanks, Keaton.